What is up guys, it is DJ Rick Webb of Fusion Sound and Lighting and let's jump on into it. How do you become a DJ? You start. But seriously, that's it. I assume if you're considering becoming a DJ, you have a little bit of knowledge of music. You maybe have some playlists already created on Spotify, iTunes, iMusic. So just start, and here's what I mean by that. You have a phone, or an iPad, and maybe even a laptop. Now, just go grab your Bluetooth speaker, or like your home stereo system that's just laying around, or even your TV sound bar, or your dad's old boombox, or just a boombox you have in general, any sort of like sound producing speaker of some sort, and go start DJing. It's that simple. But Ricky, where do I go DJ with this like phone and random Bluetooth speaker of some sort? That's like lame, right? I'll get into the lame part in a second, but literally hit up everyone you know. Your uncle, your cousin, your friend, your mom, your dad, your teacher, your coach, all of these people hit them up. People have birthdays, family get-togethers, graduation parties, special celebrations of some sort. These events that are not that special, they're, I mean, they're special for those people, but they're not that, like, they're not a wedding, they're not a high school school dance, they're not high priority events where music is like the number one importance. So you hit up these people, you ask if they got any events coming up, or if you know of these events coming up, ask them, hey, would you mind if I came and played music for your event? I bet you money right now they're not gonna say no, and maybe Maybe even you could ask them for 20 bucks, 30 bucks, 50 bucks, some low amount of money just so that you get paid for just being there and playing music or if it's like you were already going anyways, so you're going to play music, you get the point. Now back to the lame part, you're probably going to think that these are going to be some lame events where you're not going to have any fun. That's completely wrong. These events are going to teach you the, some of the most valuable skills as a DJ and that is song selection and crowd reading. Meaning, you can look at a crowd, you can maybe test out a few songs, and know in a nutshell what sort of music I need to be playing for this crowd. And this is not taught. This is learned through playing music to different age groups, different genders, different demographics, and playing music and seeing their reaction. This is how you learn song selection and crowd reading. Now doing all these small gigs is important and everything, but it is not the end all be all in terms of learning how to become a DJ. One of the hugest and most big things that I can express to you guys is to find a mentor to learn from. And I'm not talking about just watching the videos that me and Barr are making online here. Yes, those can be very helpful. I, I can say myself, Brian S. Red was a huge uh, like help for me in terms of becoming a DJ. But our videos can be very misleading. I mean, take it from a wedding scenario. This is like normally a five plus hour event that we're compacting into like 20 minutes or less of a video. You're not getting to see all of the things that happen throughout the wedding, all of the stresses, all of the different planning and background stuff that's going on during these weddings. You just get to see the amazing, awesome stuff that we get to show in the 20 minute span. And that is where finding a in-person mentor, a local DJ that's already pretty successful, comes into play. So how do you find a DJ to mentor off of. Just look up all the DJs in your area. Go on the internet, look up the DJs that are in your area, and reach out to them. And just offer to basically be a roadie help for them and basically express your interest in learning how to become a DJ. And trust me, most DJs are not going to turn down extra help or someone that's wanting to learn how to become a DJ. And if they do, f them. And really experiment with the DJs that are out there. Don't just stick with one offer to help multiple of them, go out with multiple DJs, and you'll learn from those multiple DJs what you like that people are doing, what you don't like, or maybe even if this is something that's cut out for you once you get to see all of the back end stuff that DJs have to do. So as you do this mentoring with this in-person DJ, as well as doing these little small events, these family gatherings and stuff, and as that begins to build, opportunities will become available for you to move up in terms of a DJ. But just remember one thing, you gotta ask, you gotta to put your foot forward to ask for these events. If you want to play music for your high school's pep rally that's coming up, you got to ask. If you want to play music for, say, at the football games, you got to ask. If there's a baseball tournament coming up and you want to go play music for it, you got to ask. And a lot of these, like, uh, playing music at sports events are a good way to start, like, moving up and connecting with other people because most of these gigs, you're just coming and plugging into the house PA at the stadium or plugging into the gymnasium's PA system. They're very easy to get into. Now, I came over here to stand in front of my Dead and Prime 4 to explain something that you really need to get into your head if you want to become a DJ. And I've said this before in multiple other videos, and I'm going to say it again right here. Equipment does not make you a DJ. I'll say that again. Equipment 
does not make you a DJ. A DJ is someone that can play music in some sort of order and particular way that a particular group of people will enjoy. Basically meaning you can play music for a certain type of crowd and they will enjoy it. That involves nothing to do with equipment. But Ricky, you're going to need equipment at some point. I mean, look at your garage. It's full of equipment, right? Yes, you are absolutely correct. But here is the idea behind that statement. Write down all of the gear that you want to buy. Maybe your first speaker is Mackie Fumps or EVZLXs. Write it down. Your first controller, you want to buy the Pioneer it just so happened to be beside me, DDJ 200 or a Hercules controller. Write it down. Write down all the things that you want for your first setup. And don't forget about cables. Put down about 20 to 50 bucks to buy the different sorts of cables that you need. It's something that a lot of people overlook. And what you're gonna wanna do is all these little events that you're using like a Bluetooth speaker, a boom box, your phone, save up that little bit of money, that 20 to 50 bucks that you're saving up every single time that you do one of those little events save that money and use that saved money to buy whatever is on your list. You can buy one speaker, you can buy a Pioneer DDJ 200, whatever you want to buy first on your list, save that money, buy that first piece of equipment. Working hard at all these small events and using that money that you saved up to buy the gear that you wanted to buy is super empowering compared to having like your parents just buy it all for you. Trust me, that's the exact route I actually had to go through and I'll get into that in a separate video. But the moral of the whole you need equipment to become a DJ is just not true. Use what you have available. And for reference, here's what my first setup was and seriously, get creative if you can. Get creative with the stuff as you'll see I did. And as you can see here, this is my event setup for one of those first ever small gigs I did. My speakers were just speakers I had laying around the house. My stereo amp that powered them was my dad's home stereo from the 1970s. The table was just a table that was provided at the gig and then I used a $1 white uh, tablecloth like the plastic ones and just stretched it over the feet and the top and taped it down to make like a makeshift scrim. And then I stole some of my parents Christmas lights that were laying around because it wasn't Christmas time and made them into a makeshift par light. The laptop stand was made out of scrap wood that was just laying around the garage. The speaker stands are just literally plastic tubs that were just laying around the house and I just flipped them upside down to like raise them up a little bit off the table. But that's it guys. Use what you have available. If you want to start DJing, use what you have available and just go out and do it. There's like random family events and all this stuff that you can do DJing for. Maybe you're only doing one or two a year, but it's going to build, it's going to grow, but you have to start somewhere. So that's it guys. I hope this video was a little inspirational for the younger ones out there that are watching this video to hopefully get you guys to just go forward and start. For you older guys that are watching this that have already been DJing for a while now, if you know one of those younger kids that's looking at becoming a DJ, maybe share this video with them. Maybe it'll provide a little bit of inspiration for them and get their mindset going. In terms of what they need to start looking to do if they want to get into DJ. So yeah guys, how do you become a beginner DJ? Just start. Use what you have available and just start. If you like this video, be sure to like it. If you feel so inclined, be sure to click that subscribe button. Don't forget to share this on Facebook, all that good stuff like that. Social media links right there as always. Keep the record spinning guys. I'll see you guys next time. Peace. Pew.